A mod is a change that you do to an original design. In this case, a change to the printer, to the Voron. Being these printers open source, there is a huge amount of different mods because there is a lot of intelligent people out there doing interesting things to apply to your 3D printers. Many of them can be found at a, a specific website, it's called voronmods.org and you can go in there, check everything that they have, you can filter by different Voron model and see what fits and what not and if there is something interesting for you. Most probably, if you're thinking about doing a change to your Voron, there is someone that thought about it before and they have published something. So check this website, check Thingiverse and those usual places, GitHub, that they have projects because most probably you will find something that helps you already or at least get you going with what you are looking for. Another good place to find mods for the Vorons is printable.com which is a place that is replacing Thingiverse when it comes to finding a lot of different 3D models. And I would recommend you to go and visit them because the site is amazing, things are going fast, the search engine is good, and it's getting more and more popular. So you're gonna find a lot of things in there. Today I want to talk about some of those mods that I did to my printer. Some of them I will call indispensable to have a good performance and a worry-free printing day. Some of them are just kind of good looking or interesting just because of the way that they are built. But I want to drive you through the list of mods that I have, show them in function and maybe even give you a tip where to find uh, the, the source of them so you can install them yourself. If you're finding interesting any of the content that I'm doing, please don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. That's what keeps us doing these kind of contents together with our sponsors that we're gonna give 30 seconds now. If you're building open source projects, you need a good source for printed circuit boards. PCBEA is that partner that can help you bring your ideas to reality, especially in projects like building a board. PCB Way is right now hosting an innovation contest. Go to their website, sign up, and enjoy this opportunity to create something cool and earn some prizes in the process. Let's start the list with the one, the number one mod that I think is very important when you're building uh, Voron in general and the 2.4 that I have here. If you look at the original design, there are a lot of cables going from the print head all the way to the main board and the electronics. Being all these cables there and very, very long, it, if something bad happens, if a cable goes wrong, or if you are troubleshooting something, having these long cables doesn't help much. Therefore, some people have created what they are calling the umbilical PCB or also another different doing kind of the same thing that is called the CAN bus. With the umbilical PCB, you have two new PCBs, one connected to the printhead, one connected to the electronics, and then you have the cables in between, the same amount of cables that you had in the original design. But now these cables are uh, plug and play. You can connect them, you can unplug them, and then you can, if you need to do troubleshooting, if you need to do something, it's much easier just to disconnect the cables, test, look, and do whatever you have to do. The CAN bus option goes one step beyond, and it takes more electronics, it takes a processor in, in the place of the PCB in order to condense all that amount of cables into just four cables. At this moment, you're replacing, I think, something like 19 cables and just using four. The electronics take care of deciding when to send what signal where, and that's kind of it. Both mods have kind of the same intention, that is to make your life easier when it comes to the print head and all the cables around that. If you have to disassemble or troubleshoot something, it's gonna be much, much easier if you have any of these two solutions. And therefore, I'm calling this one a must-have when you're building a 3D printer. If you read or heard about 3D printing, you most 
have heard the fact that the first layer is one of the most important things when you are printing a model. Printers like the Voron uses different techniques to make sure that that first layer and that everything that you're going to print on top of that is level correctly and you're going to have a nice looking uh, 3D printed part. In the case of the Voron 2, you have to check that the bed is straight, that the gantry is correctly aligned with the bed. And for that, the original design used an inductive probe to test different points on that printing surface to make sure um, to be able to level it and make sure that your printer is doing the correct work when it's printing that part that you have worked on it. The problem with the original design here is that that inductive probe tends to melt with the temperatures that many are running on these printers. If you are just printing TPU or something like PLA that doesn't require very high temperatures, most probably you're not gonna have any issue. But if you're printing other filaments like ABS, ASA, and things that require a lot of heat and uh, enclosed chamber, you might have the problem that I'm mentioning. There is where the second mod comes into play, and it's something that they are calling Clicky. Clicky is a mechanical switch that is used to measure those different points on the bed to do all the leveling that you need to do in the printer. The design that's been done is pretty cool because using magnets, you take the head and it picks up this new mechanical probe to do all the work that has to do around the printer and then it returns the probe to the dock, leave it there and goes on with its life. So it's pretty smart. It, I like a lot how it works with the, with the magnets and I like a lot how it works with picking it up and dropping it back because it's cool, uh, efficient and very intelligent. If you have Clicky, there is a secondary mod, I don't know if to call it mod or a secondary thing that you have, you can do with it, that is to actually measure the offset of your nozzle towards the print plate. This is gonna, this is something that they're calling auto set. And it's very cool because you don't have to worry to find that distance between the nozzle and the print plate, the correct measurements so your prints are really really good looking and nice and create that first layer that I was talking about before. Now it's done all automatically by the system if you install Clicky together with this uh, script for AutoSet. This one is also very intelligent because what it does is to pick up the probe, check the measurement of the nozzle in relationship with the switch and use that distance to calculate the distance that the nozzle should be towards the printing plate. Clicky and AutoSet save you a lot of time. You don't have to figure out every time that distance if you are changing, for example, the nozzle or if you're changing your, your printing surface. So it's something that for me is also kind of like you should have it there because the, the, the way that it simplifies your life is so good that there is no reason for me to not have this mod. Following this line of thought, in order to have that system working nicely, measuring the offset to the print plate using Clicky, you have to make sure that your nozzle doesn't have any debris when doing the measurements. Otherwise, you're gonna be having some plastic or something in the calculations and your offset is gonna be thrown away. That's why you have another mod. In this case is what we call in the nozzle brush. What's happening here is that the printer itself can go and give itself a little brush before printing or before doing the auto set calibration so you don't have any plastic in the nozzle when doing any of these actions. It's pretty smart as well, very good looking. You have your brush on the back or on the front, you decide where you want to have it. And you can even have a perch bucket where you throw a little bit of filament before doing the brush and then you have a clean nozzle 
to go do your measurements or go and start printing your model. This is also very good. But some people think that brushing the nozzle too many times, it's not good. You damage the nozzle and these kind of things. And yeah, you can use a combination of purging lines to make sure that you don't have debris when you're going to start printing your model and just brush to do the auto set because there is when you want to be very sure that you don't have anything there. Combine this tool together with some retraction and some temperatures and you're gonna be sure not to have anything on the nozzle when calibrating your set. Now we're gonna enter into one that you could arc that is more aesthetic than anything else. And it's the LEDs on the printer. The LEDs are helping you have illuminated the area where you're printing while working or what, or any time that you want in reality. But this for me has two benefits. One is that I'm able to see what's happening there and I am I'm, I'm very well illuminated when I have this mod on. And the second one is that it's going to allow me to have a webcam to monitor remotely what's happening with the print. Especially if you're doing those kind of prints that are seven hours, six hours, you know, you don't want to be on top of your printer the whole time. And having good illumination is important to have a camera working remotely. The mod that I found, it's really smart because it uses individual pieces to be printed and cover LEDs from, a, from an LED stripe. This way you have one part to print and you don't care if your printer is a small or is it big. You just print as many as you need per side and then you connect them together and you make that line of uh, LEDs in your printer. As I was saying, LEDs are important for the webcam and here is another mod in my case I'm calling having a webcam a mod. And it's because it's not part of the original design, but I think that is something that has to be there almost for sure. I have chose a camera that can be mounted, uh, very simple, inside the printer. And I like this idea because then I can route cleanly the cables uh, with some new parts that I have to print, like for example, the, the belt cover, I need to have a space so I can run the cable and I need to have something to cover the, ext the extruders so the, um, the cable doesn't look all ugly there and hanging around. But once that all these parts are made, I can have the camera all the time connected and as a part of the printer. If I move the printer, the camera is there and I don't have to be relocating and finding the right angle every time. It's just there, it's part of the printer, and it works nice. Together with the LEDs, then I have that nice picture all the time that I can check remotely and see how my printing is going. Number six is clipper screen. The original design of the Voron comes with a screen, small screen that you can do some controls and you can see some of the things are happening, temperatures and these kind of things. But the screen is very simple, it's a monochrome screen, you can change the colors but still you only, you only have one color and it's very complicated to set up or let's say like this, it's very complicated to add new things to this uh, screen or the configuration or the, the, the controls on the screen. There is a mod, which is clipper screen, which using a touch screen, you can have everything that you see in clipper, all your macros, all the information, you can upgrade the system and do whatever you normally do through clipper web interface, you can do it now here on the printer itself. I think it looks very cool because now you have this small five inches screen, touch screen there attached to the printer and you can do everything, monitor, click and just control your printer from there. It's nothing that I will call super essential and you have to have this kind of 
uh, touch screens. But I do think that it looks pretty cool and uh, it helps. The last mod that I'm going to be talking about is the extruder. I print a lot of TPU because of the drone business. And TPU is a flexible filament, which is a little bit difficult to handle when you are putting pressure. It tends to bend. Therefore, you, I wanted to have the best extruder that I could so I could have the best quality on my designs, on my printed parts. And when you are looking for the best extruder, the word Bontech comes to any conversation. Bontech released recently a new extruder, small one, called the LGX Lite, which fits perfectly here with the stealth board. Some people are still calling the stealth burner uh, mod. Uh, I don't think so because it's already released and officially released. So it's just about to, if you want to have it, you have it. It's not a mod at this point, in my opinion. But the extruder it is because it's not what is in the manual when you are building the barn. So I decided to have this one because I want to have the best quality. It fits perfectly. You just need to find the right parts to print. And now I'm having what I believe is the best setup on my printer for my business. This video got a little bit long because there are so many cool mods that I wanted to show you and talk about. I'm hoping that you found something interesting here and that you might be interested in doing any of these ones. I have in the description links to everything that I did. And of course you can feel free to, to, to ask anything on the comments or tell me about your experience with any mod that you think I'm missing and that I should be installing as well. Thank you for watching and see you soon.